Hi everyone, welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group uh, bi-weekly meeting. This is October 30th. Um, cool, welcome everyone. Uh, so, sorry recording. Uh, please put your names on the attendee list if you haven't yet. Uh, is there a volunteer to take notes today? I can take notes. Jim, thank you, Jim. All right. Um, Okay, please add items to the agenda. Uh, if you'd like to discuss some things, round of intros and updates in the order of the list of attendees on the notes. Okay, so Dirk, I think you're next. Sorry for the waiting. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, my update is pretty brief. Um, unfortunately, I've had to work quite a bit on my job the last couple of weeks, but uh, I've just been working on leadership election. Um, which means that hopefully if we can make it efficient enough, we may not need to rely on having a separate pinning service. Thank you. That's very exciting. Um, I've been following the work. Any questions for Dirk? That, that's neat. Um, maybe we can talk about that a little bit after everybody goes through. And, uh... Okay, add, add it to the agenda. Okay, uh, I suggest. Quite before before demos or uh, um, after? before demos, if you want. Oh, no, I mean after demos because demos. If okay. there are any demos, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up is Satazor Andre. I'm, I'm still writing my notes. Uh, perhaps someone could uh, take my place. All right. Uh, I'll be okay. next. Okay. Adin, how are you up? Uh, I'm doing notes, but I will, I will, uh, I'll just start talking and, and then I'll fill them in afterwards. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, basically what I've been working on is uh, have a, a, a sort of basic protocol for having a bunch of users that are identified by their peer IDs talk to each other. Um, I feel like I've been reinventing some, reinventing some of the wheel here and that some of the stuff must already exist, but I'm trying to locate the people who can help me find that. Uh, working right now, I, I put together some examples of, or candidates for a graph synchronization algorithm. So I have a graph of deltas, you have a graph of deltas, how do we put them together? Uh, next up, I'm going to go implement them uh, and and see how they work. And I think try and put together in the next couple of weeks a uh, basic chat client that takes into account, you know, don't don't show a message until you've seen the previous message in that chain uh, or other ones that I've known about. So that is that is the direction that I'm currently going in. Uh, I've also been reaching, I also have started reaching out to people about putting together uh, like an IPFS sharing tools conglomerate, uh, just to figure out who wants to make these tools and what they would be useful for. Um, basically taking, in the same way PeerStar app has the tools we used for PeerPad, uh, taking some of those down maybe another layer uh, as something for IPFS so that both the Go and the JS team have that available. Nice, thank you. Um, that's super awesome. Uh, then, uh, cool. Your, your, just, just a question. You're making uh, this in Go, uh, I believe. It's, it's currently in Go, um, just because I feel like if I don't do it in Go, nobody's going to do it. Um, they're, they're, they're like, they have a different focus and mm -hmm. I, I believe that the sort of the sharing functionality is something that should be like across the, across the board, right? Like I should be able to share a file with you in Go land and you should be able to see it in JS land. Uh, and you should be able to, you know, you'll have a peer pad thing and I should be able to get the, at the very least, the text version of that document mm -hmm. show up in my you know, fuse mounted file system, uh, right? Like, I feel like that's one of the things I would like to see happen. 
uh, and there's no one from the ghost side doing that. And so I feel like having me do that is probably good. Nice. Any questions for them? No? Uh, cool. Uh, Andres Cruz, are you ready? Okay. My, my net is, it seems to be unstable. Can you guys hear me well? Yes. Okay. So, um, comparing to the previous uh, meeting, so I've concluded the, the CRT data model for the comments uh, on Discussify. Um, so essentially, I have on the CRDT, uh, uh, thank you, Jim. <laughs> I already have the, um, the nested comments in terms of the data model. Uh, it supports uh, heading comments, updating comments, removing comments, the basic stuff, basically. Um, so I also co-hosted um, a workshop with Pedro on MOSFEST. <clears throat> we just came back this, uh, for, for uh, this weekend, basically. I think it went good. Um, so basically we presented their um, peer startup and how, how can people <coughs> use uh, that foundation to develop uh, dynamic uh, uh, apps or dApps uh, without a blockchain. And also, um, it culminated also with the publish, the, the publish of the alpha version uh, of Discussify, which essentially allows you to install um, and experiment with application. Uh, it's not finished, it's a very alpha version, but it allows you to, to try it out. So if you're interested in it, in it, you can go into this repository that are on the notes. And there, there, will find, there you will find the uh, installation instructions for you to try it out. And also you can listen and watch a video on YouTube uh, that basically shows, showcases the, the application uh, briefly. Um, so right now in progress, I'm work working on the replies feature in terms of the user interface. As I said, it's already implemented in the other model, but not yet visually. I'm working on that. Um, and also I'm working on the comments history. So for instance, if you edit a comment or delete a comment, you'll be able to, to show or to view the whole history um, of the comment itself. And my next steps after that is to add persistence, persistency of the data by using the pinner. Um, hopefully it's, it's stable and I can deploy it on, on some um, place. I, I, will, I will talk with Pedro about having it deployed somewhere. Pedro, or maybe someone responsible with the infrastructure. And also, I would like to, to take some time to do some performance, in, performance improvements. Um, but it, like it's more internal stuff between the, the background script of the extension and the slices themselves, the clients of the extension. And I think that's it. Thank you, Andre. Uh, any questions for Andre? No, but the, the demos really blew me away. I'm, I'm really impressed with uh, how, how the extension's working and uh, the, uh, the, that's a lot of work. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and it's, it manages multiple collaborations on different tabs at the same time. You can you can do that and even try that and even syncs same collaboration syncs uh, uh, without going into the CRDT land, uh, which is pretty pretty cool. Any more questions or comments, Andre? No. Okay. So I think next up on the list is Jim. Okay. Um... So um, just t took a while for me to get in, into the flow of everything after Scotland, but uh, um, I got a bunch of small little things fixed and I did a, a, the highlight I think was, I did a live editing test with the Slack users in protocol labs. I got them all to log in and do a live editing. And uh, it, there was still some uh, corruption, like if, people type something and then another peer would like modify what they typed. It wasn't, it wasn't um, I think Pedro's got some fixes. So I want to test that, put Pedro's fixes in. 
and see if, see if that particular problem is just in the editor bindings, um, if that's fixed. Um, and uh, I spent um, most of my last week was just playing around with pinning and uh, with Dirk stuff, uh, the per persister, and I integrated in um, writing uh, in just just the the pinner, not in the in the the web client, but in the the Node.js pinner, and uh, I got it successfully writing in, and just yesterday I got it actually reading back out. So there's a couple little little fixes there, but as long as I'm running the node on a disk, like on my local machine that has access to the disk, I'm just writing out um, the 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 head references to my hard, hard directory on my hard disk. And then when I, I can shut down the pinner, start it back up, and all the data gets loaded in, and it's still there. So that's really, really big. Because before I was running pinners, but they were only persisting in memory. Um, so if all the pinners shut down, you'd lose the data. And if, um, so I think that's a pretty big milestone. So um, I think my next task is going to be um, Pedro was doing some work with um, scalability testing, and he's playing with a uh, um, puppeteer cluster, I believe. Um, and so I want to try to see how see how much I can spin up. Plus, I want to get the um, see if I can get rid of that corruption problem. And then I think with the pinners, I, I think if if everything's sort of okay, we can start pushing some of the stuff out into more production. And then maybe the next uh, two weeks from now, we can actually use the production peer pad and it'll be stable. And that's my hope. So that's it for me. That's awesome. Thank you, Jim. Very exciting. Uh, any questions for Jim? Yeah, um, regarding the, sorry, I didn't. <laughs> um, regarding the corruption, uh, is it easy for you to replicate or you need to, to hook into the, um, Put your cluster and debug it there. Um, I, I'd sort of like worked on my particular. Um, first of all, like the my editor bindings are sort of throwaway code that I just did when I sort of made my peer pad nano and I cut out a lot of the production code. So I, I don't really consider that really important to fix. Um, but um, the. I got it so it wasn't happening when I was just myself typing on my own little instances, but when we had a whole bunch of people typing at once, uh, multiple keyboards happening at once, then it did pop up. So that was a hard thing to test without automated automation. So uh, Pedro's been testing it with his t test suite. So hopefully his version works better than mine. And I'll just switch mine to use his. So. Any what is what what does corruption mean in this context? So um, so imagine there's two writers, and I'm typing in one, and the other writer, even nobody's even though nobody's at the keyboard, it's modifying the document. So it's more like timing issues and uh, like it's getting the deltas in the wrong order. And then how the binding editor bindings work is it's doing diffs between the CRDT and what's in the editor at that particular time. So it's very Time so they're desynchronized, time. like the two editors will end up with different versions of the data or different. Yeah, yeah. And then it, oh. no, they they end up. Uh, I thought it was just a uh, uh, difference in so the intention of the user and what it appears. So the the the, the, the key types and uh, the value, the, the resulting value. But that's that's my my view. I'm I'm not sure. So my understanding is CRDT is nobody cares about that oh. really. Well, intention but, is like intention is like not important so or not like o ot yeah. is better for intention preservation right and crdt is like yeah whatever you'll figure it out later yeah this is strictly um code mirror and uh how we bound it into code mirror and using the sort of like crude diffing algorithm and it's yes. the way it's written is it needs a little bit of locking because it's like when you when you um read in the crdt state it it essentially types into code mirror and then that creates a, another more deltas which should be the same but then if other deltas arrive at the same time it, it, it's 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 a, it's a 
the just, just to cl clarify, I think I think it's it's uh, exactly that. Yeah, I think it's the the syncing between the the, uh, the CRDT and, and the code mirror that uh, was okay. at fault, at least from my my tests. And I think there they should mostly be be solved. I'm very keen to see if Jim can can put the the pinner into that if it will introduce any entropy yeah. into the system yeah. or not. Um, but yeah. I'm expecting not. But let's see. Yeah, and another another point on that one is like we're sort of doing it sort of crudely. It's just like it's adding edits in, but like you're getting edits that somebody else typed into your code mirror. So if you hit undo, it undoes the other person's edits, which is surprising. So people have used code mirror for lots of collaborative editors, so I'm sure there's support in there, and we probably have to use the API differently on code mirror. So th there was also a problem with like scrolling up and down, like people were um typing in other parts so i think we're we probably have to um revisit the bindings a little bit on code mirror specifically so there also exists this whole thing of like undo crdts um which may or may not be what you're getting at but uh there's there's like a whole bunch of papers and stuff about that some of it is ux things that you have to think about like what does it mean to undo but uh yeah just mm -hmm. wanted to throw that out there. Yes, I think this is more a UI of UI issue. In this case, it's more like, I just want to undo what I did and I still want to affect to, to CRT to progress, not undo CRT, just just uh, re apply the undo, if you if you. So I, can, I, can, I feel like there's an issue of, because the deltas are mergeable, you're kind of undoing a merge set of operations that includes both the intended actions and then the actions that just happen to be at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I think I think we should have a better way of thinking about like how we refer to sets of things, mm -hmm. sets of deltas, because I think that also applies to like snapshotting. Because is it like do you have like what does it mean if you're on the same version? You know. Right. Um, that's right. We could you could look into and do in in a more. In the, in the in the data context, yeah, that makes sense. Um, the thing, yeah, we're, we're losing a bit of information. We may lose a bit of information as we're reducing the the, the deltas, and so I think in terms of the history and uh, of the document, I think we have to revisit that. Sorry, I'm 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 it's not my turn to speak. <laughs> I have one one more question uh, for Jim, and perhaps uh, it's more a, a generic uh, question also perhaps involves you and, and Dirk, um, which is the pinner at the moment, correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, doesn't support any kind of sharding. Uh, that's, by sharding I mean, um, let's say that Discussify has a lot of uh, collaborations or discussions. Mm -hmm. um, a single pinner is responsible for the whole set of discussions happening at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So it yeah. will be interesting to have like a configuration where you could uh, specify a sharding function so that we can split the, um, the, the pinners among a set, a subset of, the, of, a subset of discussions to, to be more performant and scale, uh, scale, uh, scales better, to scale better. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, I, it was already a task to split off the pinner into a separate repo. And I can see like, I'm, I, I can immediately see that people are going to have all sorts of different types of pinners with different strategies. Um, and so there's just the sim simple single use pinner, and, but then there's like the situation where you don't even need a pinner, but there might be a situation where you want to have a cluster of pinners. Um, so I, I think they're all directions worth exploring. Cool. I have one more question. Um, Jim, when you're saying you are updating the heads on your hard disk, are you saying in IPNS or you wrote a different naming strategy? I just did a different, just the stupidest naming strategy I could do. I just write out the collaboration ID and then I just write out the CID, the last CID into a file on in the directory. And then yeah. when I restart at the pinner, when it sees new collaboration, it just reads that and uh, loads it in. So I wouldn't mind doing a code review with you if uh, you have a chance, but. Uh, yeah, it, it seems to work um, for my really trivial case. I just want something to work with my my little demo. So, was there was there a problem with IPNS? Um, 
I wasn't, I, my understanding is IPNS will only work on that one node, right? Like it won't yes. until the other stuff works. Um, and then IPNS it should, will be. It should do effectively what you're talking about. It'll just write to the local repository. Um, yeah, that's true. I should, I should actually just try that. <laughs> I, I think that the issue was IPNS wouldn't work in how I have it deployed publicly. So we can talk about that. So. Cool. Any more questions? Jim? Um, no, but I have a, I can do a demo later if, if we have time, but maybe we don't have time. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's speed it up. Uh, Victor, uh, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, Hi. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Victor. I used to be working mainly on infrastructure stuff, uh, but now we have people who actually want to work with infrastructure. So I'm going to move to other things. Uh, one of the things that I am very interested in, in having is PeerPad as a default application for not taking for protocol apps people in the beginning, uh, but then in the future, everyone in the whole world. Um, so what I'm, what I'm going to try to focus on are a few things, like the essential things that we need to make PeerPad great, basically. So some of the things that I will be helping with is deploying the pinner. Uh, I have a lot of infrastructure stuff uh, experience. Uh, so I can help deploy the, the pinner and we can figure out the, the architecture for, for all of that. Um, and I also, the first thing that caught my eye is that we don't have a lot of um, metrics and health checks and, and other various numbers and, and red and green bottoms to understand if PeerPad is actually working as it should be working. Um, so this helps in the deployed version that we have that we can see more errors we can catch things that are broken earlier and, and stuff like that and then of course i can help a lot with the testing uh, like the testing cluster that we just been talking about that pedro is doing and try to fold in the uh, fold in like metrics in there as well and we can start doing some benchmarking and other interesting things um so that's my my update, I guess. I, I started thinking about this earlier today when I sat down in a meeting with Pedro. Uh, I still have some some other things to catch up, but I hope uh, early, uh, well, late this week or early next week to start working directly with PeerPad and everything that comes around there. Oh. Just, just to get into the habit of this, I'm currently, for this meeting, I'm taking notes in PeerPad, even though I know it's maybe not stable, maybe they're all going to disappear, just to, uh, just to get it started. So I have it based, based it in the, uh, in the group chat. Uh, Victor, I will probably be bothering you uh, the next uh, week um, so that we can deploy the pinner for Discussify, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one thing I, I guess we have to make sure is uh, the the difference between the PeerPad specific things and the, the PeerStar stuff. So the pinner should probably work with both by just uh, in, in, in some way not be specific to PeerPad and then we can figure out the deployment so we can scale, scale it up and down depending on the application, uh, which one is seeing the more usage and so on. Uh, but yes, please bother me and I will try to help you. Cool. Yeah, I, I may also uh, bug you with things about, because I will, I will also be needing different, a different sort of pinner that I'm going to be working on. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll ping you about that. Just, just letting you know. Sounds great. Cool. Any questions or more questions? So, uh, I can say, uh, Victor, I'm very excited to have you here. Victor has been a long time contributor to contributor in, 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 in Protocol Labs. Um, 
uh, protocol labs employee and for a long time longer than much longer than than I, I have been so i'm very excited to have you in in here helping us to drive this this thing further um uh, just wanted to say welcome <laughs> um all right uh so next up uh andres Sosa, i want to give you your update hey everyone so for the last two weeks, I've concluded uh, the Scusify updates on components and UI journeys uh, focused for most fast, which Sarah's are presented with Pedro. Uh, and then I continue with the peer pad working on the UI level, uh, mostly improving improvements for desktop that's almost finished. And then <clears throat> currently I'm working on the mobile version. Uh, yesterday I had a call with Arkady and Pedro. We had some 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 discussion between um, some user experience and UI that were uh, re reworked and right now I'm looking at at it and already provided a, a new demo with all of those changes. Uh, it will be a good exercise to try to share with all of you the demo and just try to gather uh, feedback, uh, maybe individually, individually, since if I'm uh, already uh, showing the demo, I, I will be influencing each one, each one of you with my with my words, so I will try to do a, this exercise at least for for this time. Um, so uh, next in progress, I have the QA for Discussify. Mm -hmm. That's something that I already talked with Sarazor. Uh, and the next steps will be um, um, return to IDM, which was holding on until now. And yeah, for for the, the next two weeks, I, I think it should be my my, my focus. <laughs> Thank you. Questions for Andre? Um, regarding the um, like the exercise that, that you said, uh, you'll reach us by email or? Yeah, I, I may I may send a, may send an email with uh, some of the features that were predicted and some of the changes that uh, were created from the implemented version for the new version that I'm suggesting, and I'll, if, I will create something right right straight away with a high, high level. So it will be easier to understand what changed and try to come up with questions for me so I can understand. This is like a user testing ex experiment, but yeah, just, just for us for now. Perhaps uh, we could use like a GitHub, a GitHub issue. I guess it's, it's more open. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. It's a good suggestion. Thank you. Good suggestion. On your pad, yeah. Um, any more questions, suggestions for Andre? If not, Marco, are you there? Marco Oliveira? Hey, um, I'm here. Uh, I was, uh, I'm muting. Uh, so I'm Marco Oliveira. Uh, I'm uh, I'm helping out um, mainly with with the Scusify, uh, and I'm also um, helping with the design working group. So I'll, I'll start by um, saying that on the Discussify thing, whoops, um, I, I finished reviewing the UI and UX um, with Andre Souza, um, suggested a few changes to make the UI cleaner, uh, and we reiterated on the threaded conversation, which uh, uh, ended up creating a few, a few changes. Um, right now in progress, as I said, I'm also mediating with the design working group, which is just coming up. Uh, it ha has no um, final shape. Uh, I'm trying to do my best to represent the needs uh, from the, the dynamic data and, and capabilities working group there. Um, right now we're discussing mainly process goals uh, and collaboration with our teams. Um, I'm also um, trying to to get uh, the next OpoJS uh, going which will be uh, um, a good chance for us to to redo the building dApps on the permanent web um, workshop this time a little shorter uh, and create a good um, recording of that so that we can share that with with the community uh, more in a more effective way um, there's also another task uh, that I, I've discussed, started discussing with with uh, with uh, Sadas or Andre Cruz, um, which is also doing uh, a workshop on on how Discussify uh, was built uh, as as a sort of guideline for for people trying to to build something in a similar fashion. So that's a, a discussion in progress right now. 
Um, next up, um, my, my, next, my next task will be uh, discussing how and where uh, we'll release this classify. And this is something um, that I, I also want to bring in, uh, Pedro, um, just to see what the expectations are here, uh, what type of users we should be bringing in. Also, I want to brainstorm which channels and influencers will engage with to promote uh, its, its, its usage. Right now, um, it's mainly probably just a, um, a proof of concept. Uh, so we have to see uh, who would be the right um, influencers to bring in to, to get people excited about it. Um, a new task that just came up from like half an hour ago. Um, I need to help drafting the, the, the roadmap uh, as well. And I need uh, also Pedro to, to, to uh, help me out here and see what, what's, what sort of help he needs from me here. Um, I will be providing uh, feedback on PeerPad to, to Andre. Uh, Andre Souza already provided some, but I, uh, I want to see that uh, video we mentioned. I haven't seen it yet. Um, last uh, IDM concepts and overall look and feel. Uh, I, I have, uh, Andre, I have a feeling that time will be short uh, to be, well, to do this in the next couple of weeks, uh, but it's a discussion to, to follow up. Sorry, what is, what is IDM? So it's the identity uh, manager. Uh, Arkady, uh, did, have, you, uh, have you read the um, RFC about the identity that it's on Peerstar? No, actually, I haven't. I haven't seen that yet. Okay. No. I, will, I will. I will uh, leave the link on um, on here on on um, Zoom. Thank you. All right. Uh, any questions for for Marco? As I had, a, I guess, I just a, a discussify question because I'm still just new and learning about it. Um, the, uh, I got invited recently to like the, the Filecoin, like discuss it, like, you know, discuss group, which I imagine is supposed to be doing a similar sort of thing as the idea we could like potentially use them as, as guinea pigs. And, you know, I, I don't know, floated that out there as an option of trying to, you know, get, you know, some of the dog fooding and using our own stuff that, that feels like a project that might be able to make use of this? Um, okay, so at, at the moment, um, it's probably too early to be using it, uh, using this classify for a really important conversation that you want to, um, well, you want to guarantee that you keep it in, in the future because a few things uh, are still um, changing. Um, also, the, the, the persistence still needs to be uh, taken care of uh, with pinning. Um, and also, I suspect what, what you are uh, talking about uh, is more like a forum and, and less about people gathering around uh, a page and, and discussing that page, correct? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, I think it's, it's more forum-like, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, it's probably not the right use case for, for, for Discussify. Discussify is, is more about uh, uh, an extra layer on, t right, well, right now, it's, it's an extra layer on top. Uh, of, of a web page, uh, essentially web annotations and having a discussion, uh, decentralized discussion uh, around a web page. Okay, thanks. Uh, but with identity, right? Uh, it already has uh, a user port for identity and the plan is to use that as a driver for the identity management that we're going to, to try out. Any more questions uh, uh, for Marco? No. Is, is, the, is the identity thing, who is that, where is that owned by or who's, who's running that? I, I put a link on the, um, on, the, on the chat. You can read that afterwards. Because it's, it's quite uh, huge. You have uh, so, to... you're, so you're like the main contact point for, for that? Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah, I'll say I'll say that in a moment. Uh, I, I I mean you can can reach me out and I will yeah. explain okay. any doubts that you that you might have. Yeah, it was more of, more of a who question. Okay, thanks. Uh, but by the way, I want to make an, a, a note. Uh, every time um, identity comes up uh, in a discussion, a lot of people um, show interest and and well 
coming from very different groups. Uh, so one, uh, we might need to to eventually bring those people in because each each person is is uh, trying to defend uh, a certain agenda and and. A lot of that is, is very reasonable. Uh, at the same time, we have to balance that with uh, uh, how effective we are. Um, we don't we don't want uh, to be frozen just because we are getting way too much um, feedback uh, or briefing. Uh, so it's it's just something that uh, I want to raise. That I feel it will start to happen uh, once we we get the actual development uh, for IDM going. Yeah, I agree with the identity is the absolute worst problem I've ever seen in every developer has a very strong opinion about how it should work. So yeah. for forward progress, we have to be identify that and then clear the path. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree. It's um, everyone has has their own view on, on, on that. But um, but yeah, anyway, uh, more questions about for Marco? No. Okay, so uh, I can share my update quickly. Um, so we just released Peer Star App version 0 0.9.0 and 0 0.9.1 uh, this weekend for, for MozFest, fixing uh, some, some issues and also adding um, MYization for the shared value, so repeated shared value uh, access uh, is using a cached value and not, and not uh, recomputing the, the state all the time. Uh, Peerpad end-to-end load tests, is, load tests uh, uh, plus some consequent uh, fixes are merged into master, so we can run uh, npm run uh, test T2E loads, um, and you can run the, the tests yourself. Um, so with that, uh, for MOSFEST, we released peer pads, like with those small fixes, version 0 0.3.1. Um, so these this are just backend fixes, um, backend. Uh, and so yeah, went to MOSFEST, we were workshop with Satazor. And next, I would like to focus some time on improving the peer pad into end uh, load and correctness uh, tests. And focus focus more on now on uh, on their different scenarios for for correctness. Already had adding text, syncing, and then performing changes and verifying that everyone syncs to the same value. Now I want to test the intention, the preser preserving intention as we discussed. So that's something that I, I want to 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 work on um, to make sure that 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 users are. Oh, okay, a uh, CDT that, that uh, converges to, uh, everyone converges to the same value, but the value it doesn't have anything to do with, with what their input was, is not a very useful CRDT. So I want to, uh, it's not, a, some, I'm not testing the CRDT itself, I'm testing more that the sync between the binding and, sorry, the sync between the editor and the CRDT, which is the binding. And, and so, yeah, that's the, my update. Um, you want to have some questions for me? Any question? No. All right. Well, I, uh, I, I, I do. Sorry. I do. I oh, do. Sorry, Marco. Yes. I see yeah, I do. But un unrelated to what, what you were saying, it's more related to my tasks. Uh, I need to set up uh, some time to, to talk to you uh, in the next couple of weeks. Just want to raise uh, that with you. Yeah, so we have, we have some, some, some discussions to have, namely for, for roadmap, et cetera. I think we'll, I will follow up after, after this, this meeting with, uh, with um, some, some, some asks from you and some, some try to set up a, an agenda for, for how uh, we should meet and, and think about the, the roadmap. Also, also, you, you have Calendly, right? You, you can just, Marco can just schedule uh, an hour. Oh, for Marco, yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Um, any more questions? No, so I think we still have a few minutes. Uh, do you want to jump into, into demo? Uh, I think we have like three demos, Andres Souza. 
uh, new version design demo. Do we have time for, for all this? Probably not. If people want, since we had a late start, if people are able to... Pedro, just one note. Uh, regarding my demo, I can use the GitHub issue as uh, Sarazar mentioned previously. Yeah, I think I think like they can use offline. People have want to take their time into and absorb everything and then give their their feedback. So I think it's may, maybe useful to make it uh, offline. Is that okay, Mare? Okay, thank you. Um, so next up, Jim, you want you want um, to? So my demo is the same thing at the the same video I posted uh, last night. Or um, is that okay? Do you want to see it again or? Uh, 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 I think that we we have every every day we here we have a video for it like discussify we also have have a, a video for it uh, but it's cool nonetheless anyone I I've seen both. I, I haven't seen the, the the video so if you, if it's short I think it's worth playing out oh, okay yeah it's 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 really easy okay I'll I'll share it then uh, so whoever is is uh, you know later on listening and viewing this video will be seeing the demo as well. So I have, I have um, two, this is just running on my own machine. Um, so I have two PeerPad nanos, which is just a, a reduced version of PeerPad. Um, and if I, if I start it, I don't have a, the pinner running right now. Um, so test. And then, and anybody who wants to join, you can join. Um, and then, Oh, but then I'd have to pass you the, the URL. Better not join actually, because then the pinner won't. So it's going to sync. Um, should sync up here, hopefully. Yeah. So I got it. So of course the problem is if I if I reload both of these at the same time, I'm going to lose the data. So so I, I lost the data. So test two. That's uh, why you're not using. That's why you're not using the um, the browser index to be storage. Uh, yeah, so I turned that off just for performance reasons, but it's also a good test for the pinner. So yeah, so it's all so, in mem memory. Yeah, so it's all in memory. So if I, there's no index DB anymore in, in my version. So okay, so I'm gonna fire up the pinner, and you can see the the peer ID. I just take the last three characters. So ZBE is the pinner, and and it seems to take take a while to connect sometimes. Um, okay, okay, it should should be pinning. So if I type, you can see the deltas, and then I, I've got it configured. Every tenth edit is a snapshot. So, um, so th this is pinned this all into IPLD. If I, if I, if I take a look at one of these, say in explore IPLD, you can see that, and then it's got, that's a Delta. So deltas always have a parent and then the parent was a snapshot. So that has all the data. And yet, orig originally I, when I was doing this, the, it wasn't saving the snapshots properly. So that might be something I have to talk to Dirk about. Um, but anyways, um, also when I'm typing here, I'm also, I've modified this. I, I, I'm not using IPNS, although I could. Um, I'm just writing out little files that look like that. And I'm just writing the last um, CID for the snapshot or delta into it. And so, so that means that when I shut this down and I restart it, Okay, I'll do a real test here. So, um, so if I reload both of these at the same time, I've, I've lost the data. But then if I um, start up the pinner again, it should read from the, read the CID from this little file, and then it re reads the rest from the local JS IPFS node, and you can see it sync the data. So that's basically the demo. <laughs> Very cool. It's still early, but I say it's very cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, for th this particular use case, um, I should try it again with the IPNS. So um, I don't know if I had found bugs or not, but uh, I had to make a few changes to actually get this to work with the, the little file thing. So um, 
I probably will, the IPNS one will probably have the same issue. Um, what I, how I have my, I have three pinners deployed using the Zite Now service, but they have ephemeral disks. So as soon as they reboot, they, the disk gets reset. So just pinning mm. into the local node isn't going to give me any. Now you have so, Victor, you can bother in with infrastructure. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so I'll disconnect here. Okay. So Victor wanted, wanted to get out of infrastructure and now you're bringing him in. <laughs> One thing that I wanted to that I want to bring bring uh, uh, just after this demo is that um, for the user in this case for PeerPad, he just wants to know if what he has typed is saved, right? Yeah, that's what that's what he really cares about. Um, and to do that properly, we need a way to identify uh, the pinner or the pinners because it can be one or it can be ten pinners running. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a discussion with uh, Pedro about this, and we, we've, if we have an identity already in place, uh, each pinner uh, will have, perhaps the 10 pinners could have the same identity. So it's cool. it could be like peer, peer, pod, um, peer pod pinner, like the identity name per se, but they will have the same DID. So the application could identify uh, the pinner to to see if, if, if it pushed or if it's synced with that peer, which is the peer node, the pinning node, in order to present saved to the user. That's something that I've been thinking about and uh, I wanted to say that so that everyone here can also think about that as a possible solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think there's also the, the situation where we might not have pinners if if all the the nodes are pinning cooperatively, so yeah, of course, uh, yeah, it's it's um, th there's two scenarios actually. There's a, a scenario where the application itself has a pinning, a pinning or one or more pinning nodes, and there are community pinning nodes that people can you know contribute to the network in order to provide um, availability. So we need to, to think about that. Um, mm -hmm. Just wanted to, you know, to um, mention that, and possibly you will be thinking about that, yeah. and we yeah. reach out in, into a solution. We converge into a solution. I don't know. Just, just a, a clarifying question: when when you guys are talking about pinning, are you talking about like name pinning or data pinning? Like, are you pinning this is the hash of the latest version, or are you pinning this is the data in the latest version, or both? Uh, for my for my thing, it's mostly the data. So it's just you know, if if everybody shuts down their web browser and then they join the collaboration again later, <laughs> is the data still there? Uh, but uh, Jim, is it the data or the deltas? Um, how Dirk stuff works is it saves um, delta delta delta, and then it'll do a snapshot. I, it's configurable. Like, um, I set it to ten, so it's like every ten keystrokes, it'll save a delta. But you might want to do it more or less. Like that's probably sort of small because each each delta is a single character, so you might want to have larger. I, I'm I'm um, you know I'm asking this because of the um, um, the data that you are snapshotting is mm -hmm. if it's encrypted, you're storing the encrypted version of the data. How does that work? Yeah, so the it, oh, yeah. yeah, just just to kind of save on some uh, CPU cycles. That's what I'm doing. But it's possible that could, we could decrypt and then re-encrypt it with a different key or something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no. I think the question is more, uh, how are you uh, extracting the state if you don't have the decryption keys? Or if the pinner yeah. doesn't have, or, or does the pinner have the, the decryption key? Because while, while you have the, the data, you shouldn't be seeing it. Like the pinner uh, shouldn't be able to decrypt the data because of the privacy concerns, right? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so that makes it pretty difficult to do snapshots. Uh, mm -hmm. You sort of have to like ask another node for a snapshot. So one of the advantages of having leader election and having a single node who's already part of the collaboration be act as the pinner is that you don't have to worry about those issues. Yeah, they don't have to share the, the pinner. They don't have to have a separate pinner that has to have the private key or the shared 
shared secret key. But but currently, uh, Jim, sorry, your, your your solution, do you delegate the keys? So do you configure the keys in the pinner or is it a public uh, collaboration? So um, remember with my, my demo, I actually removed the keys. So I'm using no encryption. So I All actually right. had okay. to, I had to actually had to modify my uh, version. So it just has a, like an, uh, an there's, I just changed the encryption function. So they just an identity, like there's no encryption happening. So right. that, that's okay for this particular, it's a fairly permissive, uh, you know, it's, it's okay for collaborations where you're basically keeping the key of the collab, the, the name of the collaboration secret. Uh, of course that gets all shared on the pub sub thing. So you probably want to keep your app app name secret as well. Um, but in, in real production, I think we're probably going to use it. I just turned off the, the encryption because it's just hard to, to debug the thing with all the encryption turned on. So and, and you also have a problem where, where you you won't be able to to use the, the data into into the state yeah. without having a node deliver you the state. A node that has the yeah. so it, that there is a privacy privacy yeah. uh, issue yeah. uh, issue there. Uh, but but yeah, you can still get the, the encrypted state yeah. from from a different node, uh, or you can get a you can create a protocol for for yeah. to ask for the state because, yeah. uh, or for the nodes to know that, that there is a pinner and that they should send the state now and then to the pinner. Not not yeah. We could could debate this in on on a GitHub issue. I think it's and and I'm also just interested in like how fast is it with the encryption turned off because oh, we want to just see what the performance impact is with it so we can benchmark it so we can go oh, yeah this is how fast it is with it turned off and then we turn it on what's overhead like that's going to impact yeah. scalability so that's very very yeah insightful we, we shouldn't measure this now that we have like a to read load tests we could do okay turn it, turning off encryption uh, this these are these are the results yeah, yeah. We have multiple encryptions. We have SecIO encryption on the wire, and then we have, we have uh, encryption at rest, yeah. encryption on. on. Yeah. I just, just throw it in while we're talking about this that there's uh, when you, if you go and you're going to start like encrypting your encrypting your deltas again, and then do the comparison. In all likelihood, you're going to want to spread the encryption out over multiple deltas, or have the deltas be more data than just a character. Because then you're just asking for timing attacks, and it's like, why bother encrypting if you're just going to have a timing attack? Mm. Um, That's a very good, a good, a good answer. Yeah, of course. We, we, I was thinking that we, yeah. in terms of the, this is more, more peer path, but I think it applies also to others, which, no. which the, the persistence of the day. We don't need to persist on every keystroke, right? No. So we, we could have uh, the deltas. Uh, saved uh, without without uh, being yeah. able to actually extract the timing of yeah. the typing yeah. from the user, um, mm -hmm. and so we could have less. Um, so we can have like, like syncs, like periodic syncs or something yeah. like that, uh, yeah. instead of just just having every keystroke being saved. So so from a UX perspective, I think it's important to keep in mind that we'll probably want like adaptive like delta formation or like snapshotting in terms of like get, like how fast you're typing like basically like rest period so when you stop typing for a little bit that should generate a snapshot even if it doesn't kind of like fit the right number or if you're typing really fast it should probably try to consolidate that into like fewer deltas right so um we should have like flexibility or make yeah. it much more intelligent in the future yeah, I think it's going to depend, like applications are quite different. So like not all yeah. applications using Peer Star app are going to be collaborative yeah. text editing. Right. Um, like you might want to collapse a bunch of deltas together, even though they're yeah. different authors and everything, just so for like undo history type of thing, or like, a, like I want to see yeah. what, what the document state was two days ago or something, right? But you know, sometimes you just want to be able to undo a few characters. Yeah. So the, the nice thing is it's all policy basically. So that's that should be just part of the configuration or something that where yeah. how what's what's the the period over which you want to reduce to to um sorry to join deltas um yeah. I think that that's uh, that's really important yeah otherwise yeah yeah otherwise your subject is timing attacks and yes as I didn't said why why bother with encryption yet <laughs> yeah I also just wanted to to let Andre know that I'm I'm in addition to the current stuff that we're 
doing with PearPad with leadership and persistence to try and move that along. I'm trying out something a little bit different that will hopefully allow us to experiment with more options uh, on, on how it is that we want to do the persisting or how it is we want to do snapshots and you, whether you want to give someone the permission to snapshot or you want to give, you know, have some sort of consensus based snapshotting, just be able to have more options than what we're doing in step zero just to get this off the ground. Um, so I just wanted to like let you know it was happening. Cool. Uh, I see in the agenda something like hello world from Victor Bialcom. Is this something that I just I just noticed? Victor, is that something else that, that you want to? Well, no, I was thinking of doing what I did before, but after everything. But oh, okay. we already went through everything. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, so I think we're fairly off because we also started late, fairly off schedule. So I think if anyone, everyone is okay with this, we should wrap this up um, and take all, all these conversations and notes offline. Um, GitHub issues probably on NRC conversations or one to ones. Um, is that okay, anyone with the, everyone? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so, there's a, a pointer that I, mm -hmm. I, I put a link in my notes uh, if you're interested in uh, sort of sharing, sharing stuff and, and that thing, just the note that it's there. Yeah, okay. Transform. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'll follow up also with, with the, the roadmap, the working group roadmap uh, plans. Um, not plans, but uh, try try to make make time for us to to meet and then come up with the roadmap. All right. Do, do we want to do some prep for that asynchronously? Because I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that we can put down, like the like the the polygon thing. I think we can do offline pretty much, and then other things we can like put a bunch of suggestions down, and then we can discuss it real time. I th I think that's very very useful. We should we should uh, first do that, like have our input, and yeah. then we'll have a meeting on 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 syncing that yeah. amongst everyone. Uh, I agree. So yeah, if 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 everyone could could start then on 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 that with the people that were at the, at the meeting, that's uh, we we can then like tomorrow or or the day after we could join join. We I'll I'll, I'll put a doodle up with. Uh, with the uh, and try uh, and schedule something for tomorrow or day after. Good. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. See you soon. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat>